I'm David Hunt and welcome to The Art Hunter. My guest today creates these visual worlds that inhabit painting, digital and creates beauty within myth mythological odysseys. His love of spray painting headed him into the world of graffiti mo movement, which we'll talk about that a little bit later, with him being the first graffiti artist to paint at the NGV. Well, big deal. A huge art piece in the foyer of the W Hotel um, puts him at the top of his game. Hello, what's yeah. your name? Russ, isn't it? Russ, Russ. yeah. Uh, and now we Hi, know each other because we're um, we do. your your gallery and um, workspace is around the corner uh, from where I live, and I walk past your yeah. studio every day. We're locals. We're we locals. Started to hang out, yeah. which is as we've both spoken about, which is you know lovely. Yeah, at, at getting to know each other, getting yeah. to know each other. All right, so you started off uh, as a graffiti artist. Yep. Was was that that your first foray into the art world? No, definitely not. I was really into art from a young age. Like I was drawing a lot when I was four at my nana's place. Okay. She, she really was she an artist or? She wasn't. She just facilitated that somehow. She knew that you, know? you had that create. How yeah. lovely! How yeah. lovely that I used to you knit had with her. Right. Even when I was young, like right. make little. Um, I love like um, reptiles and amphibians. Yeah. So I used to make lizards with her. Yeah. Like knit lizards. Knit, knit them. Yeah. C can you still knit? Do you? No, I haven't it? knit since. Right. Yeah. She. Yeah. Okay. So I was always making art at her place. Um, I've still got a few that. Yeah. Oh, the bits from from that yeah. era. Fantastic. When I was four, like signed with her handwriting. Wow. Wow. And is she still around or not? No. But did she see heaven. you as an artist? Yeah. You know, any of your work? No, not. She passed away, unfortunately, in 1996, just before I went to art school. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, that's a shame that she yeah. didn't realise yeah. that, um, you know, what's going to happen to you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I would have loved her to see him. Yeah. Now, you, you gave um, up everything, you know, like you sold your car and everything, to go overseas with a friend on a whim. Ah, and yeah. you went to uh, Central America and Egypt. Did, and that reflects a lot in what, what you do as an artist. Um, has it? Yeah, big time. Because I was, you know, like when you grow up in the suburbs in, you know, like the Western country, like I was kind of just influenced by um, popular culture, like skateboarding culture and comic culture and, you know, underground artists like Vaughn Bidet, who's a kind of an icon in the graffiti world. Yep. So that was all I kind of like pictorially and, you know, more than just visually, but that's what I, energetically what I was into until I went to Central America with Peter Deverington, who was like a really close friend, uh -huh. a painter from Melbourne, who's now based in New York. Wow. Yeah, and then... Do you have contact with him still, Russ? Yeah, he was, yeah, he stayed, he had a show in um, ARC just recently. Okay. So, yeah, he, he stayed at my place for right. a few nights, which was great. Fantastic. Yeah. And is he forging a career? Um, yeah, you know, like yeah, he's, he's extraordinary. Like, right. Check, I'll plug Pete, because I just have so much respect for him. He's had like 25, more than 25 solo shows for the last quarter of a century. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Like one every year plus some in Europe. Right. And, yeah. Okay. So so back to you. Yeah. yeah like, <laughs> back to you. It's all about yeah, you today. Yeah, me. Um, so uh, you're like, you were influenced by um, yeah. Central America. Yeah. Yeah. Going to like, I went to the Anthropological Museum and yeah, it was like overwhelming, um, yeah, I just remember going back to my hostel and I was like, not hallucinating, but I was just on fire. Like, I just couldn't believe wow. it. It wow. was, it just, yeah, like that Aztec calendar, that famous kind of um, circular piece that a lot of people know. That's the most, but just the figurines and yeah, you know, the, the Mayan codices. That's what inspired my digital work when I went to VCA yeah. and started doing these long linear, um, this analog initially was inspired by the format of the, the codices. So, um, but but you, you, you're sort of a bit of a contradiction to yourself so much, you know, like digital spray painting, um, you know, like you do collage as well yeah. a lot. Um, you know, like I, I love the way you mix it, but it, it's all r related, isn't it? Yeah, no, I am. And so, yeah, totally. Even with my painting, sometimes they're like meticulously planned. And then I'll go the the pole or opposite, and there'll be no planning whatsoever. And then yeah, but I kind of 
I don't know. I, obviously, there's, I know there's a difference between digital and painting. There's a huge difference, but I it just like kind of not art fitness, but I just started working. You know, when you if I wasn't making things, I'd be document documenting work or even just like bits of paper, scanning them and storing them, and then keeping the actual bits of paper yeah. that weren't kind of like finished artwork. Yeah, I was just like, I don't know, kind of not meticulous, but like. I just keep everything and then I'd record images and then I'd just bounce between the digital space and the painting space. Like I might print something on a, you know, like a, a photocopy image or something, yeah. stick that up in the studio, draw over that, rescan that, then that would come into a digital work and then I might play in that space for a while or simultaneous to, you know, making traditional work with traditional media like drawing and painting and then I might, you know, take that out and then paint a section of that or so I just you know come in come in and out of these spaces yeah which now has been like 20 years you know right uh, but you the the whole graffiti thing and I and I said oh street art and you went no it was oh, more yeah, graffiti um, you're like what was the interest there and uh, of course it's yeah. very similar to what you're doing now yeah I'll backtrack quickly and then jump into that I suppose yeah because I painted in primary school with oils and um, acrylics and and drew a lot, you know, and traditional like subject matter, like still, life, not still life, sorry, landscapes and animals, and I loved animals. But then, yeah, when I was going to school, I think it was like in 1986, there was a prime piece and there are some other pieces in Campbell, a wall, famous wall, wall called King's Way. It was like the first generation of Melbourne artists. I'm, I'm like second gen. And then when I just saw the faded colors, it was, Partially the lettering, but just like the faded colors just like resonated. I was like, that is incredible. Like those beautiful kind of, you know, like contemporary colors. Yeah. And the fades, like I still love even, what is it? Like whatever, 36 years later, I love just the, like you'll see in the show tonight. Like there's, there's that's a major part of the some of these, this series, just these little graduated things that's so hard to do with other mediums, you know? Yeah. And you're the first graffiti artist to paint at the NGV? Yeah, I was in a show with Peter, who wrote Punch, and an, another famous um, graffiti artist, Murder, Jay. Um, they had a show in the Access Gallery with Jane Scott, was curating it. And I was involved in organizing that show as well, because I was working for Victorian Association of Youth and Communities on a huge kind of legal mural project at uh -huh. the same time. Yeah. And then I painted in the old Coles Court. Do you remember that? that that beautiful atrium with the water features, those water sculptures, yep. kinetic sculptures. Yep. Yeah, they turned the water off and they built a purpose-built kind of, you know, undulating wall. And I painted in there like wow. for three weeks. It was, wow. it was amazing. So, Russ, what happened to that? You know, because it's um, graffiti, huh. did they, uh, was it just trashed after? No, I gave it, it to the guys, Showtime. They, were, they did props and things in the film industry, I think. And I said to them, they, but I have no idea where it is. Right. It's a huge painting. Do you think it would be still around? You hope it is? I would love it. Yeah, that would be amazing if I saw it. It'd be, yeah. Well, why don't you ask them? I should. Yeah, yeah. come on. No, no, good Get idea. Get them to ask and ask No, I will. Them. <laughs> they were cool guys, so, you know. Yeah. It'd be cool just to say good day uh, all these years later. Yeah, you know? e exactly, yeah. exactly. But you know, like you move pretty quickly into this wonderful world that you're you're in now. Yeah. Um, well, not quickly, but you know, like, but you 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 have left that whole graffiti world yeah. behind, haven't you? Yeah, I I suppose the the nice. Well, the narrative that I hold and which is true is that I inherited those that fabulous these fabulous mediums, you know, like the kind of that like the story arc for my practice is obviously the conceptual and the, those types of things is over here. But then it's like 36 years of like using spray paint from all over the world, like in metallics and fluoros and from America and Europe and, you know, watching the paint that, you know, when we painted, there was no graffiti industry. You know, there's this huge difference compared to now. Like you would have one nozzle on one cam and you might get two pinks and you you couldn't believe that you had two pinks. And now, you know, I've got like 20, 30 pinks in my studio. Wow. From one, you know, this company from Germany, that there's like 256 colors in the range. Like, and it's purpose built to dry quickly. There's, I don't know, there's like 30 or f like 50 different types of nozzles for different spray patterns. Like we didn't, you know, we had to really like, Kind of um what's the word like 
like alchemy, be like, just meditate. I'm trying to get, you know, the paint not to drip and to do <laughs> clean lines. You were just yeah. like willing this paint to do what it didn't, what it didn't want to do. Yeah. When now, you know, yeah. when now it's designed. So, but what you are doing now is so different. Mm. There's a collage piece uh, over your shoulder mm. uh, that uh, you, you've, you've done a brilliant piece of it on the back yeah. of a skateboard, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is a, a, a great way to hang it in in your mm. house anyway. Well, yeah. I know somebody that um, uh, got a, got one of them the other week. For your auction, yeah. Uh, and, uh, and that's the way they're gonna hang it yeah. in their house. Yeah. Uh, and. Uh, it, it, it's lovely. It, it's it's so col colourful, but it's got a black background, and there's so much going on in it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like that must be very joyous when you're finding all those little pieces to use, which is so different to graffiti. Yeah, it's kind of like you know. Well, it's not like you know Banksy got his documentary. What is the exit via the gift shop? Yeah. I kind of feel like okay. Oh, I even today, that. I was driving because I picked up my frame from. Um, Collingwood for the last piece of the puzzle for the show. And I had some t-shirts that I'm going to, you know, merchandise. Hey, look yeah. at you. Yeah. Exit through the gift shop. <laughs> no, but I was like, enter by the gift shop. <laughs> I'm like, you can look at my work after you've come through the gift shop. But no, it's a pretty humble gift shop. You yeah. Know what I mean? But yeah, it's cool having stuff on. And it's a nice way to reach people because it's a bit more democratic. It's not as well. A, look at you here. Who have you got on here? Jean Michel. I love Jean Michel. You do. It's the second time I've seen you uh, with one of his uh, yeah. t shirts on. Yeah. And of course, did you buy that here in Melbourne at the NGV when he had the, the show with Keith I didn't, Aaron? actually. You did? No, I didn't. Oh, you didn't? My partner got that from me from Uni, Uni Glow or whatever. Right, okay. Uh, that show was amazing. Yeah, it was amazing here, and unfortunately, it closed down early because of COVID, yeah, COVID and bad. never reopened again. I was lucky enough to see it a couple of times. Uh, where you know his use of um, you know, like look the detail in your t-shirt is you yeah. know, like so so crazy, and I see that you yeah. do that a little bit, don't you? Yeah, and I like intervening, like setting myself up to intervene in like my pictorial space. Like I, I kind of like reclaim like sometimes being super careful and then other times you know like spontaneity control like just sticking stuff down and then coming back and then maybe drawing over it then using masking vinyl and then spraying like a fade in a tiny you know yeah like the kind of push and pull like with the process and the imagery like mm. yeah uh there's uh one of your pieces it's, it's gorgeous it's not all that big and you're seeing sort of the eyes and nose and a bit of the forehead of a woman uh, in the uh, Renaissance time, yeah. but then you've got all this other stuff going on around it. Yeah. Um, you know, like uh, you throw back to that that beautiful, gentle age yeah. of uh, of um, you know, like painting, mm. but then you've messed with it, haven't you? Yeah. Tell us yes. about that. I suppose it's like a converse yeah those images i kind of see like slipstreaming the the energy of it you know like because of the image is loaded in a lovely way and yeah it's a nice um contrast to a lot of kind of energy going around the world these days so i like the that that kind of sacred feminine and the softness mm. and then uh, yeah i've got i suppose like a matrix of my kind of you know like glyphs and stuff which i think of as like a not just in that context, but with other paintings, like the nature has its own, like we have our kind of tech base, you know, zero and one matrix, but then there's a, nat a, nat a natural matrix in the universe, you know? Yeah. So yeah. that's that kind of interplay between those. And you use Aztec images as well, don't yeah. you? Uh, there, there's a piece in your window at present that's, yeah. um, but then again, you are you haven't messed with it too much, but uh, the, the, you've got other little interesting things going on with it. Yeah, it's kind of like a conduit of time, isn't it? Like, and we're at an amazing point in human history, like one where we're, because we, we've come after these people, so we and we also have access to so much information that, um, yeah, I don't know, it's a bit like an anthropological kind of exercise over a long time of human history. Yep. Which, in those particular places, fascinate me. Not, well, not necessarily the most, it's just I've been there and it's a, a stronger connection yeah and yeah i love the mystery like i kind of think of art or my practice as like i hope it, and i hope people like experience that when they look at my work i'm not trying to like explain or rothko says it and i really like it. it's like 
the artwork isn't about something else. Like the artwork is the experience. Like that's why you, it's a visual language. That's why I paint. Like I'm not trying to, I don't come up with an idea and then do like a secondary kind of reality of the painting. The reality is the experience. Like the artwork is the experience, you know? Yep. And yep. sometimes I don't know what I'm doing. Like I back engineer the meaning, you know? Yeah. But a, a lot of a lot of artists actually paint you know, being very political mm. with their statements and all mm. that. But you're you're not. You're part a painting to create a, a beautiful piece of of work that you know, yeah. like. We, and we all look at it very differently the yeah. the way we look at your your art. Um, and but I love it. Mm, uh, thanks, you know, the com the, so complex some yeah. and then so simple others. Yeah, I hope I didn't finish what I was saying because my bit intense. It sometimes, you know, it's hard to pack in a lot. Like you want to say a lot. Um, but yeah, I hope it's just. I like the idea of like tending the mystery. Like when I looked at those artifacts, you know, in the museum and in like Tutankhamun's artifacts, it's mind blowing. It's not. I'm not trying to mimic it, anything to that degree. But if someone can just get, you know, just like yeah, touch a sense of mystery when they look at my work or. You know, it makes you dream rather. It's not the world's telling you what to be, what to think, what to buy, what to consume. I don't want to do that. You know, I want to be like the antithesis of that and just give, even in the complexity, give people some breathing space to just be outside of that, you know, that headspace and dream a little and wonder. Like, yeah. you know? Yeah. Over my shoulder is a piece that must be your. Yeah, you know, like is it your pride and joy the, the, this one here, uh, the W Hotel? You know, is it, yeah, it is, is it the one that you go? Well, apart from the fact it's in the foyer of the W Hotel. Yeah. Apart from the fact that I think it is absolutely fantastic, mm -hmm. and it's so sure. large. You yeah. know, like, and what a coup! You know, yeah. getting no, getting a, a piece in a world famous yeah. uh, hotel chain. Yeah, it was wild. Like. How did it come about? Ash Keating had already kind of um, like worked at, you know, negotiated a, a, a deal to make some work on the first and second floor and um, in a few different spaces. And then Ash and I are close friends. And then he, he said to his manager, Dave Hager, try and get Russ in the ring. Cause there was already a tender, pro they already had five artists for the tender process for that, that public work. Uh -huh. And then I kind of snuck in with the collages, like a few images of my collages, and then they love those. And they're like, okay, get Russ to submit a work. And I had a few days, so it was just like mad. But then I, I made this kind of Melbourne-esque like collage, like, and spent a lot of time, like around the clock, like went in the city photographing all night, then was just on the computer for days. And then the last night I had some other images that just kind of more supple, like more moody, you know, a lot more like Zen and, and a lot less like intense compared to my other work. And I just thought, I'm just going to submit two. I'll just break the rules, you know? Yeah. And then they liked that design, you know? So I was so lucky. Yeah. It was just fortuitous. Yeah. yeah. That's, you know, like what you thought they would have liked the Melbourne thing. But totally. They liked. Well, well, this is, um, Russ, it's so unique, isn't mm. it? Don't you, don't you think? Yeah. Well, the fab, like the, I suppose, like the, you know, the fabrication is brilliant because it's kind of like architectural and sc almost sculptural you know and it's like an organ like well i suppose i designed it like that i didn't like think of that but but it's the colors the yeah. colors and you know like it's mesmerizing yeah. um really and it's very large it's yeah. a couple of stories high is that right yeah, probably like two and a half stories high it right. is huge like i don't know it's like 50 meters around or 40 meters and right because I actually haven't lit. seen it in the flesh. You have to go, I've got to go, go in there and go see in. it. It's but great at night, like go in at night. Yeah. Yeah, even a rainy night is so nice. Yeah. You know, with the reflections outside. Yeah, I could imagine, I could yeah. imagine. So what, what is it to like for an artist like you to have a piece at the W Hotel? It's good for your soul to know you. Well, it's amazing because you think of a show, you know, my last solo show, I, I cannot tell you the amount of work I put into it. You know, the paintings were like four months solid, like every day. Every painting took me a month, 30 days straight. The digital work took me years, you know, and it was like two weeks. It's such, like it hurts, you know, it doesn't feel good, but it's supposed to feel good, you know, cause you're like, whoa, I had a show. 
So that is luxurious, you know, to have work every day, 24 hours a day, even for a month, that would be incredible. Yeah. So does well, that put what, it in context? Well, you know what, what, I mean? well what, is, what is that saying to you? That maybe you should... <laughs> do more public commission. Yeah, and leave it to the last minute to do it. Yeah, so that well, you that's what I've done for our show, for yeah. your show. Well, um, you know. yeah, like you're, when you say our show, what you're talking about, uh, the art hunter is oh, yeah. doing a portrait walk with exactly. um, there's four artists involved yeah. and you're one of the artists yeah. that I've, I've chosen to be part yeah. of it. Yeah. Uh, and how much of a challenge has that been? Uh, because by the time this um, goes to air, um, I will be coming to an end. Yeah. But what, what's it been like for you to be part of, with your own gallery and yeah. your own art space, to be part of a, an exhibition like this? Yeah, it's amazing on heaps of levels. Like, so I'll unpack it a little bit. It's great to connect more with, you know, like Peter and I've never, you know, met Marie, like other people. in And, and you're area. the only one uh, yeah. now, uh, that hasn't yeah. done an Art Hunter interview. Yeah, the other okay, three now, I've so done. now I'm in the click just in time. Hey, just and Everything's in time. like the 11th hour <laughs> with this show. And, you know, with Enzo, I already know Enzo and she's lovely. We have a, a cool relationship. It's nice to grow these relationships. It's nice to, you know, with COVID, to be out doing something, but then also still staying local. Yep. Like I'm not thinking about the gallery scene, you know, in Melbourne or elsewhere. Um, the deadline is fabulous. Thank you so much. You got me going. <laughs> no, but you made me flip my whole space for the first time since I opened early this year. Yeah. Which is still happening as we are talking here. You've got a friend down <laughs> yeah, there doing totally, something totally, that you're so. not, that you're, so you yeah. can be here. Uh, I, well, I'm pleased because yeah. you know, that was the idea of of me organising this um, exhibition. Yeah. Uh, you know, like involving all local um, artists and galleries. Yeah. Uh, you know, like to yeah. I'm here to help. That, yeah. That's why I'm here for. But I also yeah, want to talk great, about yeah. um, uh, a carpet that you had on your wall, ah. which was pretty specky. Uh, tell tell our viewers what I, what's today? all over. No, it's not here. Um, yeah, there's a few printers in the world that can print on um, these synthetic carpets, and it was based on one of my collages that was the was in my last solo show and one I have in the window. But yeah, it was three by two meters, um, and yeah, and it just yeah, I love that carpet. Like you try so many things, and you do you know it's a long road making art, and then but it's always a. A challenge it's always you, yeah. you'll always come up with a new idea as you yeah. as you work along your yeah. you know, like all, all the you know like you look back in history and yeah. a lot of um other the famous artists really change along the way and it would be sad if you didn't yeah 100 percent. yeah yeah it's great you just i don't know but your own kind of program aren't you you know like your morphing creative kind of program mm. where you just keep changing yeah the carpet looked in incredible like it just kind of translated that work so well. The threads are, look look almost a bit like pixels, like because you know, and, and synthetic carpets uniform. Yep. Because it's it's not they're not there's no um, variation, so and that's like a bit like a screen with its pixels. Yeah. And you you thought that this was just going to be a centerpiece that would probably sit there for a few years or yeah. something on on your wall in in your gallery. Yeah. And what happened? Well, a local gentleman came in and um, with his dog, and then. He was like, how much for the carpet? And then gave him the price. And then he said, would you, are you flexible? And I gave him the slightly cheaper price that I was still super happy with. He goes, cool, I'm just gonna go and, you know, ask my partner. And I was like, oh, amazing, you know? It's so random, like these, like the synchronicity of these sales. And did you think that, oh, he's never gonna come back? Of course, I have a little, you know, I never, yeah. And, the, and, he and then he back. came back that afternoon. He said he would come back the next week and then, but I was like busy working and then I didn't recognize him momentarily. And he's, Russ, I'll take it. I was like, oh, amazing. Wow. Go, yeah. So it's been, the shop's been amazing like that. Like it's, it's, it's nice, um, you know, meeting, you know, clients or connecting with people who buy your work. And I installed it in his house and. And, and did when when you installed it, did it look right? Did it yeah, it was, was a, it looked, a good space for yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, it was. Amazing. And you were happy as an artist looking where it was in yeah. within their apartment. He had like stunning, uh, the best view I've ever seen in Melbourne. 
Oh, like an oh, SB, SB apartment. Like oh, right. One view went straight to the city, but like lows, like you could just fly, and then one was like down the pier. Wow. Like, un, like kind of undulating balcony. Yeah. I was like, damn. <laughs> I said, I want to move in. I said, I'll bring my sleeping bag and just work on your, in winter on your balcony. Yeah, I'm sure they would have been happy <laughs> yeah. about that. Yeah. Uh, and again, you know, like, like with the W Hotel, yeah. uh, how important was that, you know, like a, a sale, that, a really uh, important sale like that for you? Well, then I, it's, yeah, it was for now, then it enabled me to go and make some other beautiful work. Because of the money you made 100%. from it. Yeah. You know, like I just picked up this digital work today. Um, that's the kind of, yeah, I've never had a work frame like this. It just, I can't wait to right. hang it. Yeah. Like it, yeah, it's on, I love like the, yeah, the printing technology. We're in an amazing time to be an artist, you know, like it is extraordinary. Like the carpet, that tech, you know, that's the they're million, million dollar printers and you know, yeah. that looks incredible. And now like this Hannah Mule paper with these Epson printers. It's mind blowing. And that's aerosol too. Like there's an emulsion on the paper. The printer had never, which I love as an aerosol because I don't touch. I, some parts I use with markers and things, but other times I don't touch my paintings, you know. And I've done that for, you know, th more than half my life. But then the printing tech, yeah. So the print head never touches the paper. It's like, uh, it's, it's little particles of color that somehow through the, the computer program comes up with, you know. And you don't really even understand it. So how do you expect us to understand it? But that's wild, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I know. But that's aerosol, you know, I'm a, a, well, when I was a graffiti artist and started doing legal work, I kind of, you know, consider myself like an aerosol artist. So I like, you know, that even the printing is like aerosol based. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, and, and this is the way the, the world is going, is that you don't know what's going to happen next or where art's coming from. Yeah. That, that's what I love about art, is that yeah. it's all different and, uh, and it takes us on so many different journeys. And I love the fact that, you know, like all the artists that I interview here on the art, mm. are visual artists, that everyone's very different to each other. Yeah. Yeah, and that must be important for you as an artist, you know, like not looking over your shoulder, seeing what other people are doing, that you know, like forging ahead in your own own mind. Yeah, I suppose it is like super unique compared to, you know, I don't know if you're a pro tennis player or something. You still, you're like, because you're, you're not do it by the rules. Well, yeah, the, you know, where you're a lot more unique, <laughs> maybe, you know. Yeah. Well, where you, you you do really create like. It just, well, the, the artwork snowballs, and I suppose your kind of story snowballs, doesn't it? Like the more you, the longer you do it, the more you make, you kind of just start, um, you know, like etching like a river through, yeah. like your own, like Creative Canyon. It's like yeah. your track. Yeah. But uh. can you see something down the track through that canyon that where you would like to go that, that maybe hasn't even been thought of yet within your mind? Yeah, like, have you actually had a glimpse of, what might be down the track for you? I have a lot of projects that I haven't like kind of, you know, manifested. I suppose, yeah. No, it's like a bit of a, you know, like sci-fi, you know, when there's the, you get a jump, get across and the, the things don't appear till you jump. Yep. It's a lot like that, like. Yeah. Well, of course it is, yeah. of course it is. You know, like I wasn't expecting you to know that. Yeah. Because I have some I, big things I would like to, I, you know, I have a, digital projects that I spent years and years on that have never been realized. So I dream about, you know, in what, what scope I would realize yeah. that, you know? But in the next year or even six yeah. months or something like that, a thought pattern will happen and you go, yeah. well, that will take me into another. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Well, like this show, like just the fact that it was on, then it just, yeah, like, bloop, bloop, like, you know, started designing to late at night and making new work and then trialing things yeah. and then you know then i was like made this series of paintings that i would never have made and and you know. the interesting thing is that i actually asked you if you'd be interested at a another little gallery um opening yeah. and uh and you ah. just went yeah yeah uh and i went oh okay show. you know like it was that simple yeah and all of a sudden uh, our paths uh, parted yeah. and um uh and next minute you're you're part of it yeah. And now you're cursing me. No, no, not at all. <laughs> I'm not cursing me. I would, 
two days ago i was semi <laughs> some you do question you think oh this is a bit crazy you know yeah there's always moments but but you push but then yourself. i love it too much you know? yeah you, you push yeah push yourself which is wonderful yeah i yeah. like yeah well, good luck with it. Thanks, Dave. Um, and thanks by so the time much. this goes to air, um, yeah. you'll be a superstar. Everyone in the world will know who you are. You <laughs> okay. won't be able I'll to take walk out the street. Drinks and it's, hey, yeah. it sounds yeah. good to me. It sounds yeah. good to sounds me. Good. Russ, thanks so much thanks for so talking much, with David. us Lovely today. chatting with you. Thank you. I'm David Hunt. This is The Art Hunter, and we'll see you again real soon. Bye.